Are the Niners the worst team in the NFC West uh, following this Matthew Stafford trade? Uh, yeah, I'll take this one first. I think they are. I think they're the right back where they were. You know, they they're uh, there's a lot of focus on the the fact that they they definitely have the the worst of the starting quarterbacks in the NFC West. Uh, but if you look past that and you look at, at the the team moving into 2021, there's just so many questions. You can't really say that they're they're uh, anything more than that. Uh, you know, people point a lot to the to the weapons, but you look at the weapons that they have on offense and. Moster can't stay healthy. Debo Samuel can't stay healthy. Uh, George Kittle can't stay healthy. So, you know, to say that they're uh, anything more than that at this point really is, is just is, is wishing. I see. I think they're better than the Cardinals because I think Kyle Shanahan is that much better than Cliff Kingsbury that it brings down the, the quarterback mm -hmm. discrepancy. And the 49ers have the most cap space of the four teams in the division. And they probably have the best outlook because of where their draft pick is and what they can do with that if they do improve the positions they need to improve. So I'm not saying they'll be the best team in the division after this offseason, but I think they have the most room for improvement, especially because Seattle and L.A. have pretty much made their moves and are where they are now. So really, it's just Arizona. And the only way Arizona can improve is if they made a very late coaching change. So I think the 49ers uh, have the most room for improvement but are not the worst in the division. Yeah, I'm with Maverick. I think it's still the Cardinals because of, you know, you have a joke of a coaching staff with Cliff Kingsbury. You got, what's his name? Vance, what's it? Vance Joseph. Oh God, that guy is atrocious. This is the way they don't even know how to use any of their players. You know, if, if it, it's literally just Kyler Murray, Hopkins, that they just rely off their talent alone and Kling, Kingsbury to a degree kind of caps them. So it, it's still them because I still think Kyle's a great coach. Um, D'Amico Ryan is still yet to be seen, but I would like to have some faith that he's somewhere close. That's not, not that close to Robert Saab, but like he still keep that defense like relatively, rel relatively like strong still teetering during top 10. So I still think it's the Cardinals, but the four hours are not far away from them to be honest, just because exactly what all you two mentioned about the injuries. And then there's still question marks of what they're going to do to fill in the other holes around the, around the area, like interior, you know, the tackle position, what they're going to do. There's, there's still a lot of questions. You know, it's still the Cardinals, but they're not that far away from them. All right. Uh, it's the Niners. And I'm going to say something that maybe will make you guys upset. But I believe the Cardinals are closer to being the best team in this division than the worst team in this division. Now, I understand that they have a – I don't like their coach either. But put the coach to the side for a second. This is a team – that ranked sixth in offense and 13 in defense, thirteenth in defense last season. They got this Kyler Murray kid who's as talented as any quarterback in the league. And the way I look at around, uh, the situation around the league with these uber talented quarterbacks on rookie deals, a lot of time year three, there's a super team to surround them. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Cardinals improve their roster more this offseason. Remember, they have a cheap quarterback. He's not as cheap as a guy who was the 13th pick. He first pick isn't exactly uh, it's not super cheap, but it's not expensive either. I think the Cardinals could take a big leap. Uh, the Rams and Seahawks are extremely solid. And if the Niners bring back Jimmy Garoppolo, you're just waiting for the next injury. So, yeah, I think the Niners are the worst team in the division. I don't know what they can do about it. What, what, I like the Cardinals, too, what, like you. I was saying that last season. I said the, the, the 49ers are going to be defending champions. I thought the Cardinals are going to be their most threatening opponent versus the Rams and the Seahawks. And week one, it was looking good for a second. But after just another season, just watching them fumble towards the end, they couldn't make yeah. the playoffs. I thought they were going to make the playoffs. It's just Kingsbury, man, and Vance Joseph, these guys, like, there's yeah. just no faith in them. It's hard. Like, I know that talent's great, and I definitely can see that being like, hey, maybe they are closer to getting, get, getting especially long-term wise, because the Rams are more so this year and next year. But that, ah, I just, man, Kingsbury and Joseph What I'm saying Joseph. is I, I think they're getting better in terms of the talent that they're going to be right. putting on that roster. And then the Niners, I don't think, like, I think they've been getting worse since the Super Bowl. Now, if certain players stay healthier, then they get better. But I don't think they're going to – like, I don't think this roster is going to be better this year than it even was last year. I mean, they'd be lucky to keep Jason Verrett and Trent Wood. How is this roster going to be better on paper than it was week one last year? Is that, is that a fair question? Just with health? Health. Health. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's health. going under the impression that Nick Bosa can, like, cover up the, the lackluster – Sure. defensive backs and i guess that would be week three uh is it better week but again i mean this team was all healthy except for what debo and i you week one and they lost to arizona i don't know i don't know we'll see uh, i think one big thing with arizona though is uh they're 
Hassan Reddick is a free agent, and that'll, that'll be a big loss for edge rusher That's and true. Marcus Golden as well. And then Patrick Peterson wasn't great this year, but he was the leader of their secondary. So it's it's pretty much just going to be Isaiah Simmons in the, the back half of the defense, and they need Chandler Jones to come back healthy. I'm just not convinced their defense will be uh, – I think their defense is probably going to be one of the the – bottom of the of the league unless they can get a full 16 games from Chandler Jones and he can be defensive player of the year level like he has been in the past I just don't see Arizona being in like actual salary cap hell with a quarterback on a rookie deal like they should be able to work it out I don't know who, who are their bad contracts um I'll, I'll go to it right now they're um <laughs> Is it Kenyon Drake a bad contract kind of? Kenyon Drake is a free agent this offseason. Oh, and then really? um yeah, and they're getting Larry Fitzgerald off the books. But Chandler Jones is 20 million on the cap. Eight. DJ Humphreys is 19 million. DeAndre Hopkins is 12. Jordan Phillips, the defense tackles, 12. Justin Pugh, the guard, is another eleven point one. They're in good standing. Alford, the cornerback, is another nine. And then <laughs> it's a bunch of nine million dollar guys after that but they've booted baker pretty cheap so that's still good for him right there i see what you're saying